Last night, in our continuing investigation of how Hamas planned Saturday's uh, attack, we brought you the story of the Hamas official who masterminded the brutal assault, a shadowy figure known as the guest for his need to lodge in a different location every night to stay alive. Tonight, Clarissa Ward joins us again with new information about where these gunmen trained and how they were right under the noses, in some cases, of the Israeli Defense Forces for years. Clarissa, what have you learned? That's right, Anderson. You know, there's been so much discussion about the intelligence failures that led up to the atrocities last Saturday. And CNN's open source investigator, Paul Murphy, has spent the last few days pouring through years of social media video, uh, satellite imagery, and the results and the findings are shocking. Propaganda videos put out by Hamas reveal chilling details about the years of preparations that went into Saturday's bloody attacks right under Israel's nose. Analyzing metadata from the videos, a CNN investigation can reveal the presence of at least six training sites inside Gaza, one just 720 meters from the most heavily fortified and patrolled part of Israel's border. In that camp, Hamas recreated an Israeli compound with elements of the nearby border crossing, including an insignia of the Erez battalion. The videos show they even practiced taking prisoners and zip-tying their hands at the camp. Satellite imagery indicates the camp was constructed within the last year and a half. At two other locations in the southern part of Gaza, Hamas trained for their audacious paraglider assault rehearsing takeoffs and landings. At all six sites, two years of satellite imagery reviewed by CNN shows no indication of offensive Israeli military action. The imagery instead shows that in the last two years, some camps even expanded into surrounding farmland and that there was activity in the last several months at the camps. The stunning revelations raise questions as to how Hamas was able to train so openly, so close to the border for so long, and why Israeli officials were unable to pick up on and prevent the October 7th attack. Clarissa, what's the IDF's response to this? So we, of course, reached out and asked them for a statement, which they have provided. I want to read it verbatim. We cannot provide answers to your questions since they relate to the complex analysis of intelligence at the same time that we are fighting a war. This topic, together with numerous other issues, will be investigated by the IDF at the end of the war. And it is worth mentioning, Anderson, that historically there have been many strikes uh, that Israeli Defense Forces have made on Hamas training camps. And also, I would just mention these questions that we're asking are questions that a lot of Israelis uh, want answers to. The timing may not be right now. I think people appreciate that that's not necessarily the priority, but they will want those answers, Anderson. There's also questions about U.S. intelligence uh, failures, uh, uh, assuming that, I mean, given the U.S. intelligence capabilities, that they didn't see these either. I think there are many questions, Anderson, about how on earth this could have happened. I mean, you look at that video of training with a basic replica of the era's border crossing that was less uh, than a kilometer away from the border crossing, you see the scale and the scope uh, of some of those camps, and it's it's hard to fathom or understand that it would be possible uh, that the Israelis and other uh, supportive nations would not be aware of it. Uh, the assumption may be that they were aware of it, that they perhaps didn't understand or misinterpreted the intelligence, didn't see it as a direct threat. Again, that's speculative. We don't know. What we do know is that there will be, at some point, uh, a a deep dive investigation into this by the Israelis, and the Israeli people will want to know who should be held accountable. Yeah, Clarissa Ward, appreciate it. Thank you.